Hello to Logic. Once again, I'm Sean Xavier Alcalita and we're going to tackle about the next or the last lesson for chapter 1 which is the classification of terms. So let us take a closer look. Before we proceed, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube page. Okay, so let us go now with the um, classification of terms. First, we're going to deal on the basis of the functional extension. So, what are the uh, what are the basis in identifying the functional extension? First, is what we call it a singular term. It's the one that stands for only one definite thing or a subject, or one definite thing of a subject. For example. Um, a question, God, Jose, plant, an animal, tao, bagay, hayop, lugar. Okay, so these are singular terms that stands only for one definite thing. The next one is what we call it universal term. It's one that is applicable to each and every member of a class. To all and each and every member of the class. So it is also called distributed term. And for the universal term, there are two types of universal terms. There is what we call it un affirmative universal terms and negative universal terms. Okay. So for affirmative universal terms, you have here all each every everyone everything each and every whatsoever whatever whoever any anyone anything always at all times uh, at all times these are all affirmative terms the negative universal terms these are uh, uh, universal terms but expresses negative ideas like no, none, no one, nobody, nothing. Okay? Or none at all. So, these are all negative universal terms. Next. There is also what we call the collective term. It's one that is applicable to all members of the class taken together. For example, a family. So this is a one class taken together. A family, a class, a battalion, a troop, a corps, um, shall I say, a unit, Okay, audience. A class, um, a school of fish, or a pack of wolves. Pack of wolves. These are what we call it collective terms. On the other hand, there is also what we call it particular term. It's one whose extension is limited to an indefinite or an indeterminate portion. It's just only part of the total absolute extension and there are two types affirmative particular terms and negative particular terms so here are the examples affirmative particular terms would say some practically all a few of a lot of certain almost all, many, a number of, several, um, almost all, um, it's already there, um, sometimes, um, in some respects, these are all affirmative particular terms. But when we say negative particular terms, when you say not all, not every, 
not many not everyone okay so these are the examples so these are all the functional extensions so let's proceed further Okay, so this one, number two, in the basis of signification. So, when we say univocal term, it is said of number of things in one and the same sense. So, the subject, we're talking of the subject, but the subject has been described in many senses. For example, a sun is a star. A sun is also a source of light. A sun is the center of the solar system. A sun is a ball of... Uh, is a hot ball of gas so this uh, there are many uh, there are many senses there are many descriptions but it's talking to one and only definite one subject okay for example I give you another example uh, Jupiter the planet Jupiter it's a largest planet it's a gas planet it's a planet of storms Okay, so with all of these senses, I'm talking to only one definite thing, which is the planet Jupiter. And that is what we call it univocal term. Next is letter B. This is what we call it equivocal term. It is said of number of things in entirely, uh, entirely, um, that is precisely... Um, different senses so um, it's entirely different no for example a pitcher a pitcher can be a water container and also a pitcher is a baseball player no so it's just a one word but the meaning or the sense is entirely different I give you another example love Love is a virtue or a matter of feeling that could be expressed to someone that you uh, that you like the most or that you love the most. That's love. But on the other hand, when I say love, that is also a scoreboard, uh, a scoreboard in a tennis game. Okay. So um, the love here is entirely different senses. Okay. So that is an egg vocal term and be mindful of this it's because this equivocal term is also used in the fallacy it's called equivocation but anyway we will discuss that one later okay for letter C this is what we call it analogous term it is said of number of things partly the same and partly different okay just an example here head of the family and head of the body so the word here or the term here is head so the head of the family we're talking here about the father right but when you say the head of the body is talking about this part our part now what is partly different it's because one is talking about the father the other one is talking about the part of the uh, the anatomy the human anatomy but what is partly the same it's because being the head of the family if you're the head of the family usually you are at the top right but you are but the head of the body is lies at the top of our part of the body right so that is what is partly the same here so that is analogous term Okay, um, another example here. Um, uh, Juan uh, killed Clara. The word here is killed. The word here, killed, is an analogous term because a, uh, the means of killing the person could either be murder homicide uh, murder homicide okay 
or just like that no uh, murder and homicide these are all the terms or killing is a term is an analogous term for the one is murder the other one is homicide but actually they are partly the same by putting the end of the life of the person which is partly the same and what is partly different is because of the situation no so that is an, an these are all this these are uh, all what we call it as analogous terms okay so let's proceed now okay on the basis of supposition so material term refers to term simply as a word just only a word without regard for its meaning it doesn't matter at all like music begins with m love rhymes with a dove or any rhymes that you can hear these are all material terms but if i say logical term it is a term that exists only in the mind it is just only an imagination these are the terms that that exist only within your imagination like phoenix is a bird humanity is an abstract concept I'm thinking of a unicorn, a horse with a single with a single horn, like that. This uh, that is a logical term. But on letter C, it is a real term, refers to something considered as existing in the actual or real order. For example, all students of USJR are obliged to read the student's manual. Okay. Ex-President Arroyo was arrested for electoral sabotage. Okay. Uh, the Philippine Eagle is nearly extinct. So these are the real terms. Okay, so that is on the basis of supposition, which is number three. Next. Number four. On the basis of mutual relation. So, unconnected terms are such that one neither implies nor excludes the other. So, when we say unconnected terms, uh, when we say tall, when someone is talking about tall, the other one is talking about lean. When one is talking about red, the other one is talking about sweet. So, in other words, a bisaya pa, Si Mang, <laughs> si Mang, it doesn't follow. It's unconnected. No, there's no connection. No, when uh, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the foreign policy of President Duterte, but the other says that uh, that uh, Duterte is a member of the NPA. What's the connection with the topic? So the topic. It's basically unconnected. So that is what we call it unconnected terms. Now let's go now to the connected terms. Are so related that one either implies or excludes or it's or excludes the other. So there are uh, types of connected terms. There's what we call it convertible, either convertible or non-convertible. So when we say convertible terms, they have the same comprehension and extension. They are reciprocal. It could be interchanged. The idea can be interchanged. It's just the same idea. For example, man is a rational animal, and the only rational animal is man because there's no other rational other rational animal other than man. When we say omniscient, is all knowing, and all knowing is omniscient. Okay. That is convertible terms. Um, another example of convertible terms, uh, just an example. Almighty means all powerful. But if I say all powerful, it's still almighty. Right? These are convertible terms. The other one is non convertible terms. They are so related that one includes the other in its comprehension but the other is not included in the other's comprehension. For example, 
house and building, they are non-convertible terms. Why? It's because all houses are considered buildings but not all buildings are considered houses. Why? It's because buildings could either be a mall, a building could either be a gym, a building could either be a commercial establishment, a building could either be a business establishment. So, here, the house is just only uh, that one includes the other in its comprehension, but the other is not included in the other's comprehension. So, that's it. So, I can also say that all houses are buildings, but not all buildings are houses. The same thing is also with the lawyers and judges. Well, I can say, I can say that uh, all judges are lawyers. Or even all the Supreme Court justices are lawyers. They are considered lawyers. All of them are lawyers. But not all lawyers are judges, not even justices. Because there are some lawyers who are... Um, uh, there are some lawyers who are commercial, uh, who are into e-commerce. There are some lawyers who are into um, into academe, but not all of them are considered judges. Okay, these are non-convertible terms. Okay. Number two, could either be relative, strictly opposed, or disparate. Now, relative terms. These are two terms, one of which cannot be thought without the reference of the other. For example, a master or a slave. You cannot be called a master without a slave. You cannot be called a slave without a master. The same thing is also a husband and wife. You cannot be called a husband without a wife. Or you cannot be called a wife without a husband. Same thing as also with with me and you, no? Uh, I cannot be called a teacher without a student. I cannot also be called a student without a teacher. So these are these are the terms that cannot be thought of without the reference to the other. Employee and employer. I cannot be called an employee without the employer. The same thing, I cannot also call myself as an employer without my employees. Right? So these are relative terms. Okay, next, strictly opposed. Strictly opposed could either be contradictories, contraries, or privative terms. So when you say contradictories, it expresses a simple negation of the other. So how can we express a simple negation of the other term? It's just only by putting prefix like equal or unequal or non-equal man non-man no white non-white these are contradictories hopeful hopeless right so you're hopeful and the other one is hopeless these are all contradictories okay next Contraries represent extremes in a series of objects belonging to the same class. So, contraries, ex extremes, no? Objects belonging to the same class. So, unlike contradictories that express a simple negation from the other by putting a prefix or suffix, no? To express the simple negation. But the contraries are different. It's because it expresses the extremes in a series of objects belonging to the same class. For example, hot or cold, expensive and cheap, black and white, yin and yang. So these are contraries. Okay, another one is what we call it privative. Privative expresses a perfection while the other expresses the absence of perfection okay um, healthy sick um, living the other one is dead good 
and evil. Why? It's uh, good and evil are not contraries. Okay? Evil evil is defined as the absence of good. So if it is an absence of good which is the perfection good is a is a perfection therefore good and evil are privative terms. Okay? Um, another example full and empty yeah these are all privative terms because when you say empty it is the absence of perfection of being full the absence of fullness okay so these are all privative terms so last one is what we call the disparate terms are incompatible and simply diverse but they stand for different things that belong to the same class but they are not contraries for example square and circle these are simply diverse but they are not contraries i can say square and circle they belong to the same class which is shape banana and mango just the same belonging to the same class no which is the fruit hmm for another example um, another example here uh, blue marlin and a shark so these two terms are just belonging to the same class fish but they are not contraries so these are disparate terms Okay, so let's proceed now to the predicaments of being. So this is how Aristotle described. Uh, this is how our our mind or our capability of our mind or our intellect or our reason to describe things. And according to Aristotle, that. Yeah, that for an orderly grasp of the things referred to directly by our ideas and indirectly by our terms, we will include in this study, in this section, a study of what Aristotle called predicaments or categories. So these categories point to the ultimate classes of things, actual as well as possible. Okay, let's proceed. So we can grasp or categorize and describe being by one substance and nine accidents so uh, one substance there's only one substance and the nine accidents what are the accidents quantity quality relation action or activity or active passion or being passive place time posture or position or even possession just uh, try to go forward okay substance refers to the subject itself that is the thing or being whose nature demands that it be in itself and not in the other So, accidents refers to anything that does not exist in itself, but in another. Okay, so quantity is an accident that makes a substance divisible into parts. It expresses into number, into a number. Okay, next is quality. Determines the substance in terms of a habit. Okay. Habit or easily changed perfections or qualities disposing the subject well or badly in its being or in its operation. Mm. So I have a habit of smoking daily. That's a habit. So something that you repeat, repeatedly do. Next is your capacities or incapacities. These are the potencies for operation including the deficiencies but not their lack. I have a capacity to build uh, build buildings. 
stronger buildings. I have a capacity to lead one million men. Mm. I have a capacity to fight ten people. Mm. So just an example. Okay. Effective qualities refers to passive, sensible characteristics and qualities that affect the senses. So, uh, next one is a figure and form. Figure is a qualitative termination of quantity as being curved, straight, or triangle. But when you say a form, is the quality that adds proportion and beauty to the termination of the quantity. Okay. Next. Relations, just an example in relative terms. It is an accident existing in substance or subject resulting from its reference to something else. An action is an accident resulting from the subjects acting, acting upon something else. So it's the subject is the doer of the action. That's action or activity or being active. It's the subject, the subject itself is the one who, who does the action but on the contrary passion is an accident resulting from the subjects being acted upon in other words uh, the subject is the is not the doer no of the action but it is somebody or someone that does the action on the subject okay Next, time. You know already what is time. Uh, you know already what is a place. So it's, uh, it's already understood. Position or posture is an accident due to subjects having an order of parts in a given space. So just like I'm walking, I'm kneeling, uh, I'm eating. These are uh, posture. I'm. Uh, I'm just lying down on my couch. Okay, I just relaxed myself. That is our position or posture. Okay, that next one is a habit or having possession. Possession is an accident resulting from subjects wearing clothes, ornaments, or having things. Something that you really have. Something that you really possess. Now, in the next slide, I'll give you the example of the 10 predicaments of being just uh, an example of one person the substance in the name of John okay so that is a substance John is a man John weighs 200 pounds that's a quantity John is your handsome classmate. That's a quality, handsome. John is Peter's brother. And so the brother here is a relation. John speaks at the front of the classroom. That is an activity or passion. John is loved by his girlfriend. That is passion or passivity. John is located at B243 room number. That's a place. John was absent yesterday. The word yesterday is time. John is sitting down. That's a posture. John is wearing black shoes. That's a possession. So these are the examples of the predicaments of being. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube page for more videos on philosophy. Once again, I'm Sean Xavier Alcalita. Thank you very much.